Hello, this is an aspirate taken from a case of anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, and we're looking at the low magnification view of the air dried smear. So we can see at low magnification that there are some large, quite crowded appearing tissue fragments, and at the same time, there are extremely large, quite dispersed cells. So let's navigate around. And again, we can see single cells, which are very large, even at this magnification. Some of the sheets look a little bit more cohesive. And there are some very striking, bizarre, abnormal cells with large, irregular nuclei. We are not actually able to readily recognize these cells as being uh, thyroid follicular in origin. They look like any pleomorphic malignancy, with uh, even sarcoma in the possible differential. Here is another area with the very large bizarre cells and at the same time you have other uh, very very atypical pleomorphic cells in the background. We also see some inflammatory cells present in the background which is not an uncommon finding in anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. Here is an air dried smear from another case and uh, we can see that at low magnification there seems to be some inflammatory cells in the background and in fact we start to then see these abnormal larger cells but still there are quite a lot of neutrophils in the background and sometimes these tumours can almost look like an acute inflammatory process with uh, only very sparse malignant cells. So we always have to look very carefully uh, to look at the entire smear to make sure that there aren't tumour cells like these that I'm highlighting dotted throughout the inflammatory areas. Here again, we can see these malignant cells surrounded by many inflammatory cells, which are predominantly acute in this sample. So it is important to be aware of this potential diagnostic pitfall because often cytology may be the only diagnostic uh, material that we may get in the diagnosis of anaplastic thyroid carcinoma because these tumors are usually not operable. Here is the alcohol fixed smear and uh, we can see again these very large, fairly dispersed cells. We're not seeing any papillary formations or any micro follicular structures and these uh, huge bizarre malignant cells also. And again in this particular smear we can see quite a lot of small inflammatory cells in the background in between the malignant cells. Here is a higher magnification view of the large pleomorphic bizarre cell. And over here, there is a suggestion of spindling as well in some of the areas. And again, note the marked acute inflammatory uh, infiltrate that accompanies the malignant cells. And finally, here is the alcohol fixed smear of another example. And again, we see these large malignant cells. In this particular example, the cells appear to be very cohesive and form these large complex branching sheets. And again, it's really impossible to recognize this as being thyroid in origin. If there is a cell block available, a PEX-8 can be performed. And usually uh, anaplastic carcinomas do retain reactivity with PEX-8. However, they often lose reactivity with TTF1 as well as thyroglobulin. It also should be noted that PEX-8 is also positive in other types of tumours, so clinical correlation is important. Of course, if you have a rapidly growing, very large thyroid mass, this is uh, highly suspicious for anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. And over in this field, we can see that the cells have a somewhat more spindled appearance, and some of these can also appear sarcomatoid in cytomorphology. So in summary, a few features to note about anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. The history is very important, that of usually an elderly patient with a rapidly growing anterior neck mass, and sometimes this can also give rise to compressive symptoms and hoarseness of voice. And on cytology, very pleomorphic, bizarre, malignant cells that are not readily recognizable as being thyroid in origin, and these cells often retain their reactivity for PEX-8. Thank you.